Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of Algorithm Classroom. Today, we'll be exploring a classic and highly practical algorithm in graph theory, the Prim's algorithm. It's one of the fundamental methods for constructing a minimum spanning tree, often abbreviated as MST. If you're hearing the term minimum spanning tree for the first time, don't worry. Let's start with a real-world example. Imagine you're a telecommunications engineer tasked with laying fiber optic cables to connect multiple cities. The cost of laying cables between different cities varies. Your goal is to connect all the cities while minimizing the total cost. Importantly, not every pair of cities needs a direct connection. As long as there's a path between any two cities, communication is possible. This scenario exemplifies the minimum spanning tree problem. In graph theory, a minimum spanning tree is a special kind of subgraph. To qualify as a minimum spanning tree, three conditions have to be met. First, it must include every vertex, so the graph stays connected. Second, it can't have any cycles. Why not? Because a cycle means there's a redundant connection. Removing any edge from that cycle wouldn't break the connection, but it would lower the total cost. And third, out of all the possible spanning trees, it must have the smallest total edge weight. One more important thing to remember, in any connected graph with n vertices, a minimum spanning tree will always have exactly n minus one edges. Add one more edge and you get a cycle. Take one away and the graph becomes disconnected. Prim's algorithm is designed to construct such a minimum spanning tree. The core idea is straightforward. We can think of each city as a vertex in the graph and the fiber optic cables between cities as weighted edges, where the weight represents the cost of laying the cable. Prim's algorithm starts from an arbitrary vertex and grows the spanning tree step by step. In each step, it selects the edge with the smallest weight that connects a vertex in the tree to a vertex outside the tree. This process continues until all vertices are included in the tree, resulting in a spanning tree with n minus one edges. Let's walk through an example to see how Prim's algorithm works in action. Imagine a graph with six nodes, labeled A through F. The edges and their weights are shown on the screen. Our goal is to use Prim's algorithm to find the minimum spanning tree for this graph. Before we begin, we need to set up three data structures. First, a set to keep track of visited vertices, those already included in the spanning tree. Second, a priority queue, or min heap, to efficiently select the edge with the smallest weight at each step. Third, a list to store the edges that will make up the final minimum spanning tree. We start with vertex A. We mark A as visited and add all edges emanating from A to the priority queue. That includes edges AB with weight two and AC with weight three. Now, we enter the main loop of the algorithm. In each iteration, we extract the edge with the smallest weight from the priority queue. If the edge connects to a vertex that hasn't been visited yet, we add that vertex to the visited set and include the edge in our spanning tree. In the first iteration, the smallest edge is AB with weight two. Vertex B hasn't been visited, so we add B to the visited set and include edge AB in our spanning tree. From B, we can reach vertices C and D via edges BC with weight one and BD with weight four. We add these edges to the priority queue. In the second iteration, the smallest edge is BC with weight one. Vertex C hasn't been visited, so we add C to the visited set and include edge BC in our spanning tree. From C, we can reach D and E via edges CD with weight five and CE with weight six. We add these edges to the priority queue. In the third iteration, the smallest edge is AC with weight three. However, both A and C have already been visited so we skip this edge to avoid creating a cycle. In the fourth iteration, the smallest edge is BD with weight four. Vertex D hasn't been visited, so we add D to the visited set and include edge BD in our spanning tree. From D, we can reach E and F via edges DE with weight two and DF with weight three. We add these edges to the priority queue. In the fifth iteration, the smallest edge is DE with weight two. Vertex E hasn't been visited, so we add E to the visited set and include edge DE in our spanning tree. From E, we can reach F via edge EF with weight four. We add this edge to the priority queue. 
In the sixth iteration, the smallest edge is df with weight 3. Vertex f hasn't been visited, so we add f to the visited set and include edge df in our spanning tree. From f, there are no new vertices to visit. At this point, all six vertices have been visited, and we've included five edges in our spanning tree, AB, BC, BD, DE, and DF. Since the graph has six vertices, the minimum spanning tree should have exactly six minus one, or five edges. The total cost of the spanning tree is two plus one plus four plus two plus three equals 12. Now, let's briefly examine the Python implementation of Prim's algorithm to understand how it mirrors the steps we've just discussed. We start by importing two modules, heapq for the priority queue implementation and default dict from the collections module to build the adjacency list of the graph. Inside the prim function, we start by building an adjacency list to represent the graph. We loop through each edge and, for every vertex, store a list of tuples containing the edge's weight and its neighboring vertex. At the same time, we create a set called nodes to keep track of all the unique vertices in the graph. Next, we initialize four variables. Visited, a set to track visited vertices. MST, a list to store the edges included in the minimum spanning tree. Total weight, a variable to accumulate the total weight of the spanning tree. Min heap, a priority queue to select the next edge with the smallest weight. We choose an arbitrary starting vertex. Here, the first vertex from the first edge, and mark it as visited. We then add all edges emanating from this starting vertex to the priority queue. The main loop continues as long as the priority queue isn't empty, and the number of edges in the spanning tree is less than the number of vertices minus one. In each iteration, we pop the edge with the smallest weight from the priority queue. If the destination vertex hasn't been visited, we mark it as visited, add the edge to the spanning tree, and update the total weight. We then add all edges from this new vertex to the priority queue, provided they connect to unvisited vertices. Once we've included n minus one edges, the spanning tree is complete, and the function returns the list of edges in the minimum spanning tree along with the total weight. Here's the sample test section of the code. The variable edges defines the graph using edge tuples, which match the example we just walked through. Next, we call the prim function to compute the minimum spanning tree for the graph, and finally, we print the result. The time complexity of prim's algorithm mainly depends on the performance of the priority queue operations. In Python, we use the heap queue module, which provides heap push and heap pop functions. Each of these operations runs in O log n time, where n is the number of elements in the heap. Throughout the algorithm, each edge is pushed to the heap at most once. Since there are e edges in the graph, and each heap operation takes O log v time, where v is the number of vertices, the overall time complexity is O e log v. This makes Prim's algorithm especially efficient for sparse or moderately dense graphs. That concludes our discussion on Prim's algorithm. I hope this explanation has provided you with a clear understanding of the concept of minimum spanning trees and how Prim's algorithm operates to construct one. If you found this content helpful, feel free to like, subscribe, or leave a comment. See you in the next session.